throughout time, people across the world told each other tales of how they came to be. Of heroes and monsters, romance and tragedy, death and rebirth. Mythology helped shape the ancient world explaining the unexplainable. This is Mythology Unleashed. Many cultures throughout the world tell tales of gigantic snakes, often depicted as destroyers such as Apophis in Egypt and Jormungand in Scandinavia. But the aboriginal tribes of Australia envisioned an immense serpent who could behave dangerously, but was more often than not a benefactor to mankind and the natural world. The Rainbow Serpent the Rainbow Serpent was a god worshipped by the many aboriginal tribes of Australia, and it went by a number of different names, depending on the region. In some cultures, the Rainbow Serpent is male. In others, female. In yet others, the gender is ambiguous, or the Rainbow Serpent is a gender-fluid entity. Though the Rainbow Serpent's depiction may vary, at the core of the myths, the Rainbow Serpent is first and foremost a nature entity. The serpent's body represents the long, winding rivers of Australia. The rainbow scales can be attributed to the changing of the seasons or the many hues of the earth and the sky. Its very presence is said to bring on the rains, and if it is offended, it can prevent rain and cause drought or inundations that cause people to perish. Aboriginal Australians of the Outback believed that the Rainbow Serpent lives in the waterholes of the country and travels between them, either under the ground or in the storm clouds when a rainstorm is moving. When it travels along the ground, it creates trenches and gorges that turn into rivers and when it travels beneath the surface, it creates hills and mountains. The Rainbow Serpent is credited with the creation of much of Australia's natural wonders, including the Avon River, Mount Matilla, Wolf Creek Crater, and Arnhem Land. A common motif in the Dreamtime stories of the Rainbow Serpent is its role in bringing life to otherwise empty or desolate places. One tale relates how the Rainbow Serpent awoke from its subterranean slumber and came out from beneath the earth. Refreshed from her long slumber, she traveled far and wide, leaving winding tracks from her huge body and then returning to the place she had first appeared. Upon her return, she called to the frogs to come out. The frogs came out slowly, as their bellies were full of water, stored during their long sleep. The serpent tickled their stomachs, and as the frogs laughed, the water spilled out all over the earth to fill the tracks the rainbow serpent had left behind. And so lakes and rivers were formed. As the water spread, Grass and trees began to grow, awakening all the animals from their hibernation, who then followed the Rainbow Serpent across the land. The Rainbow Serpent made laws that they were all to obey, but some began to make trouble and argue. The Serpent declared that those who keep the laws will be rewarded with human form, but those who break the laws will be turned to stone. The serpent was as good as her word. Those who broke the law became stone and turned into mountains and hills, while those who were obedient were given human form and given their own totem of the animal, bird, or reptile from when they began. In the tale of the Wawalog sisters, after the eldest sister gives birth, the rainbow serpent, called Yerlunger in this tale, is disturbed by their presence, and summons thunderstorms and floods to rain down upon the sisters. When the sisters see Yerlunger slither from his hole, 
They begin to sing sacred songs and dance to appease the massive creature. They sang and they danced until the storms passed and the sisters fell asleep in their hut. Your longer then entered the hut and swallowed the family whole before flying off into the air singing the sacred songs. According to one Lardil story told by Dick Rufsey in a children's book, the Australian outback was little more than an empty plain with no plants or animals to speak of, only tribes of people. The serpent, here called Griala, went in search of his tribe and created the mountain Narlbulgan, modern-day Mount Mulligan, and many gorges and rivers and lakes. Having found a tribe that spoke his tongue, Griala spent the night with them and allowed two boys refuge inside of his mouth. Griala swallowed the boys, and knowing that the rest of the tribe would be angry with him, he made his escape away into the outback. The tribe pursued Griala and found him asleep on Borabunru, the only great natural mountain. They slashed the creature's stomach open, but what came out instead of the two boys were two parakeets that flew off into the sky. Griala awoke and was angered to find his stomach cut open and lashed out at all around him. In his rage, the Rainbow Serpent tore the mountain asunder, sending huge boulders far and across the land, forming mountains and hills. Many of the humans caught in the chaos were killed by wayward stone, while those that hid and found shelter were turned to animals. Griella slithered away into the sea and left the remaining humans to care for the land and the creatures that he had created. Though the serpent goes by many names, by many shapes, and by many identities, its myth endures throughout the continent of Australia. Where it slithered, it creates the mountains and the rivers, and where it sleeps, it creates lakes of the outback. It brought life to the continent awakening beasts, birds, trees, and plants. When docile, it brings fresh rain and water to the land. When upset, it can flood the world or leave it in drought. The Rainbow Serpent, as both a creator and a destroyer, embodies both the inherent beauty and inherent danger of the natural world. <laughs>